Hello, everybody. My name is Lat Mackey, and this is Games Done a Classic. Welcome, everybody. This is where we look back at legendary GDQ moments with the legends that made them happen. Thank you so much for being here. And this is going to be Kaizo Mario Brothers 3. I'd like to now welcome Mitch Flower Power and Grand Pooh Bear. Thank you both for being here. How are you guys doing? Good. Who are you with us? Making sure everyone's uh, yeah, unmuted I'm, and stuff. I should be here. Yeah, I'm, I'm here. Just I believe me. I'm here. Just, just me and you, bud. Okay, yeah. just me and you. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> wait. No, oh, wait. Probably am for I a few not? minutes, I think. Oh, wait. I didn't, I didn't realize I had to unmute in Discord, too. I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> what up? We got him. I got you, guys. Um, okay. Oh, hi, so, How you doing, Pooh? How's it going? It is going well. I, I th for those of you that are just joining us on Twitch, we are live. So Mitch was just on a world record pace, not nothing new. <laughs> and, but uh, yeah, joining... that's what we were all doing before this. All of us were sitting in the green room watching Mitch. You know, almost world record. Almost, almost. Yeah. World record. So close. close. Just stupid hands. The hands. Okay. Well, okay, Mitch. So uh, uh, let's start with you first because you're the runner of this one. And uh, let's, had you done any runs at GDQ? But tell us a little bit about your history before this GDQ. Yeah, I, th I think this was my second one. I, I can't, I think I only did Kaizo Mario Bros. 3 at this GDQ. This was 2016. And I did, um, or no, this is, this one is 2016, right? I think, yeah. I, I don't think I did anything in 2015, but, um, 2014 was the co-op run with Karu 100%. Um, and that was my that was my other Mario 3 one. Actually, 2015 was when we did um, Mario Maker, wasn't it? No, because Mario Maker came out in September, right? No, because you did you did this one, then Mario Maker, then you did then the blind race, and then we had the Kaizo race right after it. So you were on you were on like for like three hours. At, uh, that was this on one. GDQ. That was this. Okay, yeah. okay, yeah. 2015. Yeah, I, I wasn't doing SGDQs at this time. I was only able to do HDQ. Mm. Um, so, yeah, so, yeah, that was that was intense. And this is definitely first Kaizo too. Mm -hmm. And that's where I kind of want to go with this, Mitch, because at this point, you've obviously grinded Mario three for years now. At this point, I mean, this is 2016. Mm -hmm. You've been playing the game. I don't know how long. Um, when did you discover the Kaizo, Kaizo Mario three, and how did you find this game? So I didn't actually find it. The game, uh, oddly enough, was made for me. Um, the person who made this hack had stumbled across Kaizo, um, a little bit of Mario Maker stuff, and then a little bit of Super Mario World Kaizo, and he had noticed that Mario 3 had no Kaizo. Um, the only thing Mario 3 had was those extremely unfair pixel frame-perfect jump hacks. You know, mm. I think it was like something called Challenge Hack 10 that came out in like 2004 or something, right? And it's just like... Completely unfair stuff. So um, this was actually the first uh, Mario 3 Kaizo hack that came out. And it was made by someone named Obidus1, who was a part of my community. And he kept updating me on the making. And then when he released it, I nobody was able to play it except for me for the first like day, I think. Um, he let me play it and show everyone. And then he released it. So yeah, it was really cool. So had you, did you play, do any of the play testing or had you, as, as this game is being developed, were you at all involved in that or you literally got a game that was ready to go? Yeah, he, he wanted it so that I was like the first player. So I didn't do any, I don't even think he had anyone test it, to be honest. He was very so, like alone in the community. There, there wasn't really a, a Kaizo community. Mario 3 never had anything like that with Super Mario World. And to be honest, it like barely still kind of has it in compared to Super Mario World. So uh, yeah, he did everything all on his own, everything. It's so interesting because, first of all, it looks incredibly challenging. This looks like one of the hardest Mario 3 games I've ever seen in my life. Mm -hmm. Is it that way to play through it, especially for somebody at your level? Uh, yeah, this game is it's definitely really hard. And Mario 3 lacks certain things in Super Mario World that make it easier on the player's eyes and, like, I guess gaming intuition. Is that, like, with the way the screen scrolls and the, the options you have, there's a lot of like, oh, so I can't jump there. Oh, so I can't move there, right? You really have to go through that with Mario 3. Like, you don't know what's up there, right? Even in this jump right here, like, I don't know what's going on there. So the first time playing, you have no clue what to do, and it's, it's really hard that way. Um, had you done any attempts where, I guess, were there any point where you beat this game deathless or anything like that? Or were there always going to be deaths involved in getting through this game? Nope. This, uh, <laughs> the, nope. I've always died. No, no, no. Hold on. I've done it without... 
No, no, no. I've always died at least once. <laughs> I think about it. I have not got. I don't even know. Has there ever been a Kaizo hack deathless? Come on. Um, I mean, there's been like the quickie worlds and kind of like the, the ones that I want to say like are. I mean, not, not, not like any disrespect these. to yeah, not any disrespect to those hacks by any means, but the ones that are like designed to be yeah. more easier intro hacks, like those have definitely had ones, but none of like, uh, I mean, I'd say like you know from like, you know, Kaizo one, I, I guess Kaizo one, yeah, Kaizo one is probably the hardest hack that's had a deathless run. If I mean, and hard yeah. is such a subjective thing, or, or you know, right? But yeah, I, I would say Kaizo one is the one, and that's that's had a few now, or maybe. Did Calco do Kaizo 2 at that? I, I can't remember if he's done Kaizo I'm 2. I'm not sure. Deathless. Yeah. He might have. Calco's <laughs> he's incredible. He's, so. Yeah, he's yeah. pretty good. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's so good. Uh, Pooh, doing yeah. commentary, had you ever played through the game or is this something where you were just picking up on watching Mitch play and things like that? Um, no, at this point, I hadn't played through the game. Um, and this is this is the very first commentary I ever done. Uh, hmm. I'd ever done, so... Um, I was just kind of, I, I just kind of asked Mitch how he wanted it done. And, um, we played in the practice room. Like I had watched him play it a, a, a million times on stream at the, by this point, but, um, we just hung out in the practice room and I just kind of asked him how he wanted things to be said and, and whatnot. And, and yeah, that was it. Um, it was kind of interesting because, uh, Mitch didn't have, we couldn't hear each other. So like when me and Mitch are talking, we can't, he, we couldn't hear each other during this run. Mitch was yep. full concentration. Yeah. Oh man, I was, yeah. I was really nervous for this one. Um, yeah, yeah, and oddly enough, I, th I think Pooh Bear was the only one who could have provided uh, any kind of Mario <laughs> Three commentary at that GDQ. Th there might have been one or two other people, but they could have yeah. said no. And it just goes to show, he was like, stuck with me, <laughs> like how how small, how much smaller the Mario Three community comes in terms of Super Mario World. I mean, you see Dram's run, which is a year earlier. Then he's got the full couch. I mean, everyone's there, <laughs> and it, it's not that Mario Three doesn't have that. It's just it's really hard for a lot of people to step up with some of the Mario 3 stuff. So the, couch, the couches are pretty hard with Mario 3, but yeah, not anymore, the, though. Yeah, and at this point, I was I was still a very, I would even say a scrub Mario 3 runner. So, I mean, I was, I was Mitch, Mitch was throwing me a bone on just even having me up there, so. <laughs> Heck yeah. Yeah. Well, there's, there's this game does a lot of interesting things with just vanilla Mario 3 mechanics, and we're seeing one of it right now. Mitch, walk us through, like, or, or Pooh, walk us through some of the things that this game does differently than we might see in the regular vanilla Mario 3 game. Yeah, you take that away. Oh, with, like, the, the Goomba shoe? That's, like, one of the most unknown things in Mario 3, that the Goomba shoe has a double jump. So if you bounce off a ledge, you can jump in midair and uh, use the Goomba shoe, and uh, it always surprises people. They always think it's like cheating or it's like something weird or like, oh, is this custom? And there, there's no custom things in this hack at the time. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, so he kind of does the things that you don't see much in Mario 3 and then has fun with them. So you're gonna, there's like a frog suit level in this, there's a hammer suit level, Tanuki suit, and then the, like the Goomba shoe, right? So yeah, he really, he really goes off. And that's like always been the tradition for Mario 3 because again, Mario 3 doesn't have as many things as Super Mario World. You mentioned earlier that uh, you were really nervous leading up to this run. Why the nerves? Like, what what, what was it about this game that? Ah, uh... <laughs> uh, I'm a nervous Nelly. I get Art. nervous for everything that I every, every GDQ run, everything that I do, I always get nervous. But but it is very hard. And uh, it was interesting that you asked Dram about um, what he had planned, and he mentioned that Pooh Bear had asked him. I had asked Dram before this run, what what did he have planned for the death spiral? Because that's the scariest thing. You get a death spiral. And you're worried that your run's going to take three hours and that you might have to, like, oh, I can't beat it, guys. You know, step off stage. That's one of the <laughs> scariest things to worry about. So, um, yeah, you're always nervous. And you just ask, ask you know, other people in the community how they deal with it. And they, they always have good information. You know, we all work together. It's great. The, the irony is, the irony of that is, is, like, or two runs after this, me and Mitch do a Kaizo race, Mario Maker race against Panga and Carl. Mm -hmm. And we did die out so many times that we had to, <laughs> <laughs> that we had to get off the stage. So that's yep, the, yeah. that is the, the funny part of it. that's another thing that that like Mitch like should, like is really incredible about this run. And I think that gets lost sometimes on GDQ runs, especially when guys do multiple games. Is that he wasn't just practicing for this; he was practicing for a Mario Maker blind race and a Mario Maker Team Kaizo race mm -hmm. too at the same time. And at and at the time, these the Mario Maker stuff was just like mind-blowingly harder than anything we had seen before you know um so it was 
to, to prepare for all that and to put on a run like this was just like, it was so incredible to watch as someone who realized how much work had to be in it. You know what I mean? Like it just is a, it's, it, it's just commending how like great Mitch is at, oh, at stepping up you. on these things. Yeah. At some point, we're going to have to dig into some of the Mario Maker stuff because that's one of those moments, too, seeing some of those hard levels. I, I, I don't know if others, but I'm actually even surprised, Mitch, to hear you say about the nerves and everything because when we see your performances on stage or when you're on a world record run and everything, you, you seem like it's game time. And I, I, is that still part of, like, your thought process? Like, man, I got you know, to do well in this because it seems like you're, you're really locked in and tuned in when we get to see you at the highest level. Well, for sure, it's the only thing I know how to do. <laughs> I, I did it once and it worked, and I was like, "All right, let's just keep doing this." A, a, every time I get nervous, like on stage or or from my run. Um, but yeah, I, I always find that if I if I think more about things that I want to say to the crowd, I think less about what I need to do. And I I, I have kind of like a traily mind, right? So if I'm more focused on the crowd and commentary and stuff like that, I most certainly will mess up and. Um, if there's anyone who ends up going digging through my GD crew runs, you'll actually notice that I don't talk much at all. And like even, um, even like two years ago at a GDQ run or something, I probably didn't talk much. Or you know, it's just it's just something that has worked for me once. So I thought, you know, this is great. Let's just do this, and I should be fine. But I still get nervous. Totally. I mean, it is, you know, and now we noticed in 2016, we're in a much bigger room. I mean, this is probably, uh, this might have, must, probably must have been your first event then with a room this big. That must have been fun, I guess. <laughs> oh, yeah. This this room compared to uh, 2014 was way bigger. So in 2014, I have the backup of like a teammate, right? A, a co-op. You know, it, hey, if Karua messes up and I mess up, we go down together. It's great. I, you know, I'm fine with that. But then... But then I get to this GDQ and I had no idea what I was getting into. And I see the room and I see the lights and I see the couch. And then I'm like, oh my gosh, I got Kaizos, I got Mario Makers. And yeah, just kind of, and uh, a lot of my runs are also, you know, on Thursdays and Fridays. So I have the whole week to stress about it and stuff. So it's, mm -hmm. it gets, it gets at me. So I just get on stage and I'm like, that's it. It's way worse having a late in the week run than having a run you can get away, get her, you know, done with early. Mm -hmm. way worse because mm -hmm. you spend the whole week just stressing about it you oh you almost over practice because you're in the practice room so much and then slowly all your all your friends stop being in the practice room because their runs get it done and they want to have fun you know and yeah they're, they're all yeah. they're out you know they're traveling or they're going to sightseeing because it's the first yeah. time there and yeah you miss out on a lot you're of just stuff. sitting there stressing the whole time yeah <laughs> and it's like we don't have to stress out about it but we do we take so much pride in yeah. making sure that we put on a good show and showing the world like how hard we work and how well we play it's like it's a, if i played half as well as i did in this run i think it would be just as accepted but to us we're, we're we're working really hard to show the world that this is like what we do you know so it's you it mentioned the, yeah. I, I mean not to say but i think it also makes a difference too because you know that these games are only going to be shown once right. most likely yeah mm -hmm. like you're never gonna you're never gonna get a chance like mario 3 you know you can run that multiple times but you know, the the, ha the fan made games, like it's usually like a one and done situation. Um, so, yeah, that's actually cool yeah. you say that because after this run, like I put the game down, right? I might have mm. done world record attempts maybe for the next month or two, but I haven't picked this game up, you know, ever since. And it's like, in order to do a GDQ run, I'd have to pick it up, practice, get, get comfortable, get good, submit it, didn't get in, try, you know what I mean? So you just put it down, right? You mentioned that there were you had a couple other runs too with the with with Mario Maker, which, if, for those that don't know, the physics are completely different, <laughs> and the mechanics. I mean, the gameplay is very differently. Um, how did you prep that, Mitch? Were you playing? Were you mostly focusing on this, or did you have to split your time? Like, because that seems like a lot of work to have three runs in one GQ. It was, and uh, I made it so much harder on myself. So at home, I played on a flat screen LCD, and at GDQ right now, I'm playing on a CRT. But then we also played on flat screens with Mario Maker, so my my brain was all over the place with like latency and like input delay and stuff. So it's just I just overstress way too much. <laughs> this is a nightmare. Um, we were seeing a bunch of cool stages that, and we're kind of talking through them. But if you go back and watch the run, there's some great commentary, so you do touch upon a lot of this. But uh, the you mentioned this earlier, Mitch. This is all vanilla. There's nothing. There's no custom code or anything like this. Is all vanilla actually built into the game? Mm -hmm. yep. Wow, because no like the, we just passed the froggy suit level, and you uh, you meant you got hit, but you killed yourself. Like you had to keep the froggy suit during that. Why why did it? Ha why couldn't you have finished the stage without uh, frog suit? 
Uh, okay, so there's a piece of timer, and the frog suit swimming in water is very fast. So you need to keep the frog suit to make it past the coin gate while the peace switch is active. So if you lose the frog suit, the, you will never make it there in time, and you'll you'll end up dying. Um, was the, I'm sorry, you mentioned the name, and I've totally forgotten already. But the developer of this ROM hack, um, were they a speedrunner at this time? Like, did how did they create something that was this challenging? Did they were did they have those those speedrunning skills? Uh, a little bit. They were they were a viewer of mine, a watcher, um, and they really liked Mario three, and obviously disliked that Mario three didn't have a Kaizo. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so they watched, and you know, he was he was in tune with Mario Maker and all that stuff. So just um, perfect timing, I guess. He just decided to do it. I was surprised too. Was anybody else running this game after it came out, and you'd uh, you know you had done a run of it? Uh, yeah, there there was a couple people. There's yeah. a couple awkward situations too that came from this game um, in terms of like strategies and like how things go down. But no, there was definitely a couple people who played, tried, I tried played. doing some runs. Yeah, yeah after that, I did. I did some. Mitch, Mitch, actually, this is really funny. But after this, I don't know, probably like six months after this, Mitch helped me get the world record by hooking me up with some strats that he hadn't done in his run, you know? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, you gotta help him. <laughs> yeah, he actually helped me. Um, and then, I mean, later on, he took it back because, you know, he's better than me at Mario 3 and always will be. Um, but uh, it's just kind of really funny. <laughs> I think that shows, like, how cool he is, though. It's like, he was like, yeah, you want to get it? Like, here you go. Here's, here's, like, three free strats that'll save you, like, a minute over my time, you know? So, um, yeah. <laughs> We had, Pooh Bear and I actually did that same thing to go off of Mario 3, but we actually did that exact same thing with uh, Dram World. Um, throwing Mitch strategies. gave me strats. <laughs> Mitch gave me strats that he didn't use <laughs> and let me get better times. That is true. <laughs> I think that's well, yeah. every run I've ever done, actually. Mitch is giving me free strats. So. <laughs> Basically, Mitch is, is, even when he doesn't more play so the game, like yeah, even when he hasn't played the game, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, was, yeah. I've heard both of you mention this, and I'll ask to, to both of you. Uh, I'll start with you, Mitch. Uh, what is it about uh, Mario 3 that keeps you coming back? Because you've been doing running this game for over a decade now, and, and I'm curious why you, you know, what, what makes it fun? Like, what, what keeps you on the grind? Well, I mean, if it's vanilla Mario 3, the fact of um, when you get to a certain level, the RNG uh, controls a lot, so you're essentially gambling your skill. And it's really hard to reach your full potential. And with someone like me who does, like, you know, playing video games as, like, a career and as a Twitch streamer and stuff like that, it really allows me to open up the doorway and work as long as I can to try and reach my max potential, you know. And once you put so much time in, that you know, giving up is, you know, you never want to give up, right? You always want to keep going until you succeed, right? So uh, Mario 3 is perfect for that. You, you, um... Yeah, I don't know what else to say. But no, yeah, no, Mario 3 is perfect for that. It's a great answer. And I, Pooh, I know you haven't run the game in a while, but you still, you've mentioned how great of a game. I mean, what, what made you yeah. keep playing the game? Well, yeah, I mean, it was my first speed run um, ever. And um, a lot of what, I mean, a lot of what I kept playing is just, I really love the community. I really love the people I met in the Mario 3 community. That was definitely one part. But it is, I mean, like Mitch said, it's it's definitely a game where you never feel like you reach your potential. Um, and that, that I think is, is why, uh, the Mario three community stays kind of tight knit, um, and, uh, also stays kind of addicted to it. Um, and, 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 and while I, I, I always say I'm never going to run Mario three again, I know that's a lie and I know I will one day, you know, I know I will one day, um, but it is, it is just one of those, I don't know. It's just one of those games. It also is just like, it, it's super smooth. It really is. It's super smooth. The it physics, feels really yeah, fun I didn't even yeah. mention that, right? It's just, it, yeah. it feels right when in it terms does. of controlling Mario for some reason, it just feels right. Like Mario, Super Mario World's like a little floaty and a little slow, mm -hmm. but Mario 3's just got like that tightness. And I'm pretty sure 97% of Mario 3 runners are not satisfied with their runs. And, yeah. You know, so, so that's what keeps it going, right? Like, yeah. Like, I've never had a no-hands PB in Warpless. Like, still to this day, I've never had a no-hands PB. I've had no-hands before, but I've never, never PB'd with it, you know what I mean? So, like, right. just, just even that alone, like, there's... With no improvement over the last, you know, two years when I haven't run the game, I mean, that's 35 seconds I could cut right there, and that's... I have a pretty good time, you know, like... I move up a lot of leaderboard spots. Yeah, that's so. a free PB. Exactly. It's, it's so funny you, that so you say get that. addicted to that. Yeah, it's like it's like pulling a slot machine, man. You get you get mm -hmm. kind of addicted to it. Um, yeah, you get a gamble and, your skill. You finally get that one run mm -hmm. where you played really well, and then you get the chance at the hands. Yeah. And then you get pulled in by them, obviously. Right. Yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, yeah. Dram mentioned it in his run, uh, but do, is there any of that RNG in in this in this game, Mitch? Like, do you, are you facing? Are there, is there is there a hand situation? How does it work at this game? There's so with Mario three with the way enemy spawns and stuff like that. There's like um, there's like false RNG. So where I just died there, like the the fire chomp was so high that because I have to kill him, he's in my way. But he's so high, I bounced on him. I went to the spikes. You know, but that's my fault for positioning. So it would trick a player into thinking that it's RNG when it's totally not. Um, but other things in this game, no. No, that, that was just an example of, like, how you can get fooled into thinking things are RNG, but this run doesn't really have any RNG. Maybe the way Bowser attacks, right? He might shoot two fireballs instead of three. Mm -hmm. Bowser's kind of really the only one, I think. And the boomerang bros, you never know when they're going to throw boomerangs or the, the sledge bros, you never know when they're going to stomp. It's just stuff like that. Before I had attempted my own speed runs, I when I was watched like I watched this run and I remember watching Kaizo Marwa and thinking like, man, how would they let this into a GDQ? It seems like really tough. How could these runners actually beat it and things like that? And then, you know, Dram I think really broke it down really well that there's not as much RNG as you would think. The the challenge mm -hmm. comes in the actual skill. And yeah, so, not in these Kaizo games, right? Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Is that the case for a lot of Kaizo type games? Is that really the the way it kind of like where it's really about you getting better in your approach? Yeah, because yes. I, I think one of the biggest things is that when a Kaizo creator, who's not like obviously an official game creator, makes a hack that relies on certain RNG for you to progress or feel accomplished or feel good, will turn the player off very fast. And then the community gets wind of it and they're like, nah, that level sucks. There's, there's no chance, you know, and then it turns people off. So I think a lot of creators try and get rid of RNG stuff and make more skill based tricks. Yeah, I think I'm guessing that's a guess. Yeah, I mean, while being while being, I guess, like unfair games in traditional level design sense, they're actually incredibly fair games for the most part. Um, mm -hmm. Minus maybe like bosses, which you know, in a lot of my in, in my opinion, I think a lot of bosses should a lot more bosses should be RNG. Honestly. Some of the new hacks yeah. prey on first impression unfairness. <laughs> So yes. the first time you get yes. there, you, you have a, you have like a maybe a three percent chance of like progressing. They they prey on that. But other than that, that that's the joke. That's the shtick behind uh, some of the hacks. So, well, I mean that's kind of interesting though because I mean, Kaizo, I, we were talking about this just a little bit. Uh, uh, many times developers or, or people who are creating these games are making them for speedrunners they like and for people they know and things like that. So mm -hmm. there is, a, like, they know what they're giving to their friends or people that they admire and things like that. And I'm I wonder if that actually plays into <laughs> some of the development <laughs> at times, right? Sometimes. I, I, yeah, I mean, like, uh, I'm sure Obitus included things that was, like, special that Mitch said he liked at some certain points. Um, I mean, I know... Uh, you know, Barb included things that he knew I liked in Grand Poo World series. Um, yep. Specific, you know, like specifically because I said I liked them or different points or like, um, so I think it just, I think that's definitely something you want to do. Like sometimes, I mean, I think like any game, you're going to have an audience in mind and, and when you're making a game for a community that's like four people, you know, it's pretty easy to pinpoint what that audience might like or not. Yeah, you know? I agree. Well, yeah. You know, I don't know if it was at this time, Mitch, because I can't remember, but I remember there, there is this meme category of frog percent, you know, in Mario 3. And so including a frog suit, you know, level like we've never seen it. <laughs> yep. So, I mean, yeah, that, that must be, that's pretty cool that it's based around and all, all around that. So. Yeah, and, and also Mario 3 actually does not utilize the power-ups that they give you, but they, they take so much pride in them. It's so weird. They give these, like, hidden king messages and they put put them throughout the game, but there's no... I mean, obviously, you can't do level specifics because if you lose it, then you can't get it back. There's these, a weird these... glitch in Mario 3 with the big power-up blocks that would, when you get a power-up from a big block in one world and you die or beat the level, that, it, that never respawns, so you can't actually get it back. So I think that's what they had to struggle with, and they couldn't utilize the powers. Yeah, it, it's, I'm glad you brought that up because it's one of those things I've always wondered because I, I don't know, I, I'm in my late 30s. So I remember when this game came out, it was like the blockbuster game. It was one of the biggest games I remember ever seeing hyped or anything like that. And then when I heard about like, I beat the game first without ever seeing a hammer suit. I didn't even know that was a thing. So like, yeah. it, it's kind of wild. Maybe you're, it's kind of weird that you, you're not able to get, or you're not able to find those in perhaps a normal course of the game. Well, I, I mean, not to. I, I think one of the things that's so special about Mario Three is is you can like be like a quote unquote master of Mario Three, and never know about like a white mushroom house, you know. 
Mm -hmm. And that's why, that's something that makes it so iconic is all these things that exist in the game that you might never have actually seen. And you've played through the game a dozen times, you know? Um, it's, I don't know, it makes it special. I, I know we've skipped some of the gameplay. What the heck is going on in this level, bitch? I see you go. <laughs> <laughs> so, I hated this level. Yeah, so in this level, when you get to this point with the leaf, you have to hit a P-switch and then do zigzags in the coins, right? So that when the P-switch goes off, you create a stairwell for yourself. Um, but I created too much distance between one zig, I guess. I don't know if it was a zag or a zig, one of them, um, where it was like six blocks high, and Mario can't jump six block high. So I had to go back up and tail swipe, but so I figured I'd meme around and clip for no reason and then just get out of there. <laughs> <laughs> and then grab the fire flower and leave. This, right, this you gotta, you gotta have fun part is way harder than it looks, too. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, it's once again, it's using things like, uh, what did we see like in, in World 6? I mean, we only see like two levels or three levels that actually have piranhas and ice cubes. So it's like, once again, just something that wasn't, it was only you it's funny because we're, I, I, I don't know if we're, we're not criticizing, but we're pointing it out for Mario 3. That actually has kind of become a staple. I, I don't know. I just recently played through 3D Mario World, and there are things you only see in one or two levels. And I, the mm -hmm. more I realize, I'm like, that's kind of actually kind of what Mario has kind of been about over the last couple they of are, decades. They are really good at like one timing you with things. Mm -hmm. And like, like, the, like the, the boot in Mario 3 is it's only in one level but it's everything it's what everyone remembers i know so famous it's in they, one it's, not even one level one optional level you don't even have to play <laughs> right? that level you don't it's even not even forced play. level yeah <laughs> um so it, it the boot is the boot's probably the best example too and then and then what's crazy about the boot is that it has the double jump but there's only one pit in that entire level that it has a double jump with it so like the chances of you ever even trying the double jump or attempting it are like you know, zero. Yeah, even if you did, with. you wouldn't know that you did kind yeah. of thing, right? You, yeah. You, you wouldn't even know. <laughs> they have to do uh, it it's it's funny that we're watching this playback before we go to the next, like, topic, is that I got to the Boom Boom, and there's a muncher there that you have to damage boost to get over to fight the Boom Boom. Um, so I had to take the death. But there's, like, a strategy where if you just wait, the Boom Boom will actually go through the muncher, and then you can just fight him. So the, all of this is, like, I could have avoided this um, altogether, and interesting how strats get developed over time like yeah. how that wasn't well, a thing before but like yeah i could have saved myself three minutes on this run <laughs> <laughs> it's also a, the thing oh good go boop no there this is funny this is a funny part too because uh uh i i was doing some commentary and and the <laughs> chat all thought that i bothered mitch but they didn't even know he couldn't hear me at all <laughs> and, and then mitch turns around and and, and just he, he talks to me and he just complains about the thing he's just like ah, i don't know what happened <laughs> Oh, but they thought I was like thought yelling he, like, at you. Yelled at me. <laughs> I remember. Everyone that. thought he yelled at me, and it was like there was like this Reddit thread that was like had like forty or fifty replies about whether or not he yelled at me. <laughs> it's just so so funny how the internet works. Yeah. This level is awesome. Okay, we have to talk about this level because it's so interesting. This exists in once again Vanilla Mario Three. What, what are we looking at? Why why are you pausing? <laughs> so those those work on I I think. The right term would be like a global timer, and that timer does not pause when you press <laughs> pause. <laughs> um, so this level is, uh, and I don't think the creator intended that. I don't even think he knew. Um, so you can use that to your advantage to just be safe constantly. Uh, not only safe, but you can also control which kind of cycles you get. The piranha plants come out later. Um, the the turtles they don't move when you're paused, so you can really you know get a handle of yourself. Right? If I felt uncomfortable here, I would just press pause. Right, Oof. but yeah, yep. You just press pause and they keep going. I'm curious, Mitch, if you saw any more people attempt this game once you had done like this kind of showing of it. Like, did, were there more people speedrunning the game, or even maybe picking up uh, a hack? Uh, I'm sorry, uh, fan-made games for Mario Three. I don't think this game specifically really blew up in popularity of players. I think a lot of people wanted to watch me keep going, but like <laughs> like Pooh Bear said, he played it. Um, and then, you know, there's always been a, you know, a handful of people who have, who play Kaizos. Kaizos are just naturally interesting to a group of people. You just get drawn to it. Mm -hmm. it, it I know, Mitch, you, you, you've you made your own uh, uh, Kaizo game at this point. <laughs> and mm -hmm. is it tough, you know, creating something like this or something that oh, you find so interesting and challenging? It is because while you're making it for other people to play as like a first impression their first time, you're also you also need to be satisfied with what you're making. You you need to be happy with 
how it looks, how it plays. And um, sometimes when you make a hack, you can't really get that impression. So you need the right testers and stuff. So yeah, it, it is really a big uh, process to like do all that stuff. There's some interesting stuff happening in this level. I think we should talk about it because some of the world, uh, some of the levels in World Seven of the vanilla game we see show up in fan-made games. We see them even some of these things that we will talk about in Grand Pooh World too. You'll see some of the, these things there. Uh, what exactly is happening at this stage, and, and what makes it challenging? Um, so the first thing that's challenging is all the tight stuff at the beginning. You know, one touch of the spike, uh, you'll die. Uh, the second thing that's challenging is. The turtle jumps, if you miss one turtle jump, you fall down to the bottom and die. And the other thing is challenging is um, using the up arrow platforms. If you don't, that's challenging right there, the, the Goomba <laughs> drops, right? The little Kaizo drops. Um, but yeah, if you miss time all your jumps, um, things won't line up. I think I remember it, it was six bounces, six bounces, then five bounces will lead me back onto the platform every time from the music note. And if I do five or four of each, then it, I'll squish or I won't have enough height. And yeah, so it's just all timing, right? I love those Yammer brothers or the Fireball brothers here at the beginning of this level. It's just so <laughs> drops you. You just finished a really tough stage, drops you right into death right away. Uh, and then this yeah. game, this game, that's one thing that this game's really like. You're gonna die right at the beginning of the stage too, <laughs> and um, there's no instant retries and in, in all these early Kaizo games too. So it's just so. It's it's, it's funny so you when you're playing that. it casually, man. It's it's rough. Yeah, look at this. Just like. Garble of mess. Um, it's it's, it's funny rough, that Pooh Bear says that because I don't ever remember complaining about that stuff when playing no. uh, this game. Um, but now, as someone who's played a lot of Kaizos and stuff, I really dislike the instant die at the start of a level. Two seconds in die, one second in die, right? And you're working on that first jump for like three hours. I, I'm not a huge fan of that, but I don't remember complaining about it in this. I think it's new to me, so I... You know, the, I didn't have a comfort. Yeah, I think, um, I think like in a pre like dram world, like level does like we were a lot more lenient with level design, and now now because we've seen where's my Hassan Pfeffer, right? Like we yeah, need it now. Yeah, exactly. Like where like, is it? Like the good. Yeah, now now we've now we've been to paradise. <laughs> we don't want to leave, you know. <laughs> like uh, and that's kind of and you and you, well, I mean, I'm sure we'll talk about that when, by the time we get to Grand Pooh World too, you know. Um, where they're starting to, the games are definitely evolving from not just being incredibly difficult, but visually appealing and like, you know, gameplay appealing in a, in a different way. Yeah, Mitch, I'm curious about like, when you have done some of your level design and things like that, are do you take into account the aesthetics of it, the way it looks, or is it something where you're going definitely. for the flow? Okay, cool, so that is something. Definitely, I, wanna, I want it to look right. I want worlds to like connect with each other. I want to make it really feel like a comfortable environment. Because if you, if you constantly keep dying, you're going to want to kind of like, you, you're going to want your player to like the overworld music and the way the, the world looks. You know, if they're just like, if this is ugly, I keep dying, no retries, I'm out of here, right? That's just like, it's weird how that does play a small role on making hacks and ROMs and games and stuff. It's interesting. I, I always... Yeah, I always like to say that, like, if you see those little details just on, like, the overworld right away, um, you know that it, there's a good chance the creator... Because, you know, we don't know every creator. Like, not every creator is is widely popular, you know what I mean? When you make your first hack, nobody knows who you are. Um, so when you see that someone's gone in and done those visual details on, you know, the first level or the, the first overworld, you know that they probably also spent time doing those details on each jump and things like that you know so it definitely makes a difference it's true you'd be surprised yeah. at how many hacks are like so good for the first three worlds and then you can see how they got lazy in the, the last couple or they rushed it or you know what i mean like it's 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 definitely out there uh, and coming up with ideas for an entire you know game as <laughs> you know at some point you can only you know creativity all that kind of stuff i'm sure plays a factor into it uh, so as we're entering, as we're getting closer to the Bowser fight here, um, it, there are some really interesting spots here where you have to build up P-Speed and things like that. And I don't even know if we talked about it much, but a lot of Mario 3, and I've heard you talk about this all the time, Mitch, revolves around P-Speed. And it seems like this game really takes that into account in certain sections. Yeah, a, a lot less than you would think in terms of vanilla. But when you get to certain areas, it's you have to have P speed or you're not gonna you're not gonna win. Like there was a level earlier where you hit the P switch and you had the munchers, 
right? You go one way with P-Speed, you go back the other way with P-Speed. If you don't do it properly, you'll die. And in this level, the conveyor belts, you have to build P-Speed and you have to connect specific uh, shots with your hammers. And if you don't do that, yeah. So P-Speed, he made sure that if you did have to use P-Speed in, in this game, um, you have to do it right or else you'll die. And uh, because of how fast you go with P-Speed, it, it gets very hard uh, shooting fireballs and hammers in specific spots. It just, it makes it interesting. Like there, you, like in this little section, you yeah. have to have P-Speed yeah. or you're not going to make it over the spikes, right? And here's a good example. You see how half the blocks are like missing? Yes. Um, that's kind of what we were talking about where when you use a big block in the overworld, they don't spawn. So he had to he had to put in like 15 there to make sure <laughs> one would spawn, right? Because it just doesn't work. Yeah, that's actually like a really funny thing that we were trying to like play with when, when, you know, Mitch was going really ham on speedrun strats <laughs> later on. Was like, that's what, right. what blocks to... do we hit? Yeah, what blocks do we hit so they spawn differently? And there's like, yeah, we forgot uh... to mention you have to take an intentional death in this. Yes. So if you get, yeah, I forgot about that. If you get yeah, all the way to level like 13 or something, I think, without dying, yeah. you have to die really fast so that the blocks respawn. Yeah. You have to. And that was just baked into the vanilla ROM of uh, <laughs> Mario Totally 3. forgot about that. Yeah, oh. I totally forgot about that. Mm -hmm. That's really funny. Uh, uh, oh, I mean, no. some, something we should mention, too, is, like, this level, like, as you can see, too, it's, it's like, he's taking each um, power-up and, you know, making, like, the five-room castle out of it, which is, like, a kind of a traditional Kaizo thing. A lot of these jumps, Mitch, look like you're waiting until the very last moment, too, to jump. So a little, very close calls on where you can actually press the jump button and succeed. Oh, yeah. But, I mean, later to find out, like, you could have done that jump so much easier. Like, I, I keep messing up on a jump. It's just, like, so easy, like, you know, hindsight, three months into the future strats, right? You mentioned it. Can't so you did spend... Oh, go ahead, Poop. No, it's just amazing how much harder or how much easier this game is now. <laughs> <laughs> with what we know than mm -hmm. it was then <laughs> it really is <laughs> and that's and that's uh that's actually a good introduction for anyone who's into speed running and you know you always feel like you're at your potential but you just you never are you never believe that you're actually as good as you possibly can be because there's always that yeah. little bit there's always that other little trick that other strat that makes something easier you know extra little time save right it's crazy you know, I know this is going to sound strange, but one of the things I didn't know about Mario 3 unt until I actually started speedrunning it myself was you can only have a certain amount of fireballs on screen <laughs> at one time, mm -hmm. especially after watching you, Mitch, because I, I see 100 well, fireballs right there, come out yeah. of my <laughs> <laughs> a lot How are of you doing that? Yeah. So that had to make this fight a little bit more challenging, uh, you know, initially, or for people who are playing it casually on their first playthrough. Mm -hmm. Oh, totally. And I, I don't think there was any, there was any, I think that's just a, a vanilla Bowser, right? There's nothing, I don't think there was anything yep. special. Okay. They just moved around some blocks. Um, you <laughs> have to fire kill them. And they took away easy fire kill, but. Uh, and that's something actually that, uh, you know, just recently we've gotten custom Mario 3 bosses, really. I mean, barely. We're, we're, yeah. we're on the barely, surface. Yeah. Right? Mitch oh, had, in his Mars. last hack, Mitch had like the first one that I can remember seeing, actually, now that I think about it. Full on custom. It's like yeah. the, the, the ROM that I recently made, Mini Kaiser Wars 3, it was just so heavily inspired by, by Barb's Grand Poo World. Like, I still remember making it. I'm just like thinking, like, oh, how did Barb make things like this work? Or how did he, <laughs> he's, he's just so good at it. And it just it, it inspired me so much to want to make my own my own game. A little bit like that. Well, and that's where we're going to be going, folks, because we're going to start seeing the evolution of where fan-made games, Kaizo games, are going to go after this. Um, this is pretty awesome to see this again and to relive this moment. Does definitely yeah, one of those ones so that uh, blew my mind. Yeah. So thanks for sharing your insight and everything like that. That was a lot of fun. Uh, I, I don't think I've actually watched that run since like a few months after it came out on the YouTube channel or whatever. Yeah, that was really cool. That was fun.